Hello, hello, hoo hoo. My test sound check. IP number seven. A1 Corporation extracts ore for eight different companies in a state. The firm anticipates variable cost of 65 pesos per ton along with annual fixed overhead of 840,000, which is incurred evenly throughout the year. These costs exclude the following semi-variable costs which are expected to total the amount shown for the high and low points of ore extraction activity. March, 850 tons, so obviously this is your low point, and August, 1,300 tons, 46,200. A1 uses the high-low method to analyze cost behavior. Requirement number one, calculate the semi-variable cost for an upcoming month when 875 units in number of tons will be extracted. So to comply with the requirement number one, ano ba gusto ng requirement number one? Semi-variable cost. Let us just put it here. Okay? Using the high-low method, it is very obvious at dalawa lang naman talaga yung given dyan, yung high point at saka yung ating low point. So, high activity is at 1,300 units in number of tons, less the low point which is 850. The cost at the high is 46,200, less the cost at the low point of 39,900. Very basic. Therefore, you ultimately would have 6,300 sa taas, 450 sa baba. That would be 14 pesos variable cost per unit or per ton. Continuing the procedure, the total cost, depende kung ano uli gusto mo, assuming gusto mo na naman, total cost at high, that will be 46,200, less the total variable cost also at that same level of activity. So remember, hindi ka pwedeng gumamit ng ibang activity level aside from the high and the low. Okay? You cannot argue that it is within the relevant range, so kaya pipili ka ng something in between. That will not work. Okay? High-low method does not work that way. 18,200 this one. Could you please check our computation? Please check our arithmetic. Okay? Fixed cost here must be 28,000. Could you please check? Is that correct? 28,000. Alright? Therefore, the variable cost at 800, still continuing number 1, total variable cost at 875 under question times the computed 14 pesos, the total variable cost must be, the please check, 12,250, alright, less not less, but add the fixed cost we have just computed to be 28,000. Then our final answer for requirement number 1 should be 40,250. Requirement number 1. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> requirement number 2. Calculate the total cost for that same month. So, for that same month, meaning kasama na lahat yung purely variable at saka yung purely fixed cost. So, malinaw dito sa ating problem kanina that this cost, sabi niya doon, exclude the following semi-variable cost. So, yung mga cost na binigay kanina sa taas are exclusive of the figures mentioned below. So, semi-variable costs we have computed already to be 40,250. Okay? Our variable cost at 875, 875 units is 65 per unit tulad ng na-mention kanina sa taas. That would be how much? 56,875. Okay? And our fixed cost is given at 840,000 incurred evenly throughout the year. Sabi, so 840,000 divided by 12. That one would be, I think it is 70,000 according to my prior computation. Could you please check? Final answer for number 2, 167,125. Requirement number 2. Requirement number 3. The company uses Cortez tracking to haul extracted ore. Cortez's monthly charge are as follows. If the activity is 800 to 1,099 tons, 70,000 ang charge. 1,100 tons to 1,399 tons, 90,000 ang i-charge sa atin. 1,400 plus tons or above, meaning to say above, 110,000. Letter A, from a cost behavior perspective, what type of cost is this? 
anong type daw ng cost yan? So, very obvious, it must be labeled semi-variable cost. That is our final answer for letter A. If the company plans to extract 875 tons, is the company being very cost-effective with respect to Cortis's billing rates briefly discussed? Well, the answer should be obviously no. Kasi kung 875 tons ang iyong magiging production at yan din ang ihohol ni Cortes then it falls within this range 800 to 1,099 tons. So, final answer natin, no. The company should be able to maximize the returns if it produces 1,099 tons, of course, within this range. If it produces 1,099 tons or any number which is close to that but not exceeding, okay? So, that we would be charged 70,000. IP illustrative problem number 8. Central Valley Company is a merchandising firm that sells a single product. The company's revenues and expenses for the last three months are given below. So Central Valley Company, comparative income statement for the second quarter. Sales in units, April 4,500. For the month of May, 5,250. June, 6,000. You also have your sales revenue, cost of sales, gross margin, operating expenses, shipping, advertising, salaries, and commissions, insurance expense, depreciation expense, that is your total operating expenses. Net income, 58000 94750 for April, May, June, respectively. Requirement number one. Determine which expenses are mixed. And by the use of high-low method, separate each mixed expense into its variable and fixed components, state the formula for each mixed expense. So, class, gusto niya high-low method. So, hindi mo pwedeng titigan lang yan at sabihin, say for example, na ito ay fix, ito ay variable, o kaya naman mix, based lang doon sa pagtitig mo or by merely looking at the account title, tulad ng sabi natin, under the account analysis. The instruction is specifically states to use the high-low method. So, so shall it be. Unahin natin, therefore, ano ba pinakaunang cost dyan? Pinakaunang expense? It's the cost of goods sold. So, cost of goods sold. Pinakauna natin. High point is obviously the month of June. The activity upon which cost will be made dependent here is in number of unit sales. So, June ang pinakamataas. 6,000. Sabi natin kanina, yung activity ang susundan at hindi yung cost. That is why, kinaugalian na natin na isulat muna yung denominator bago yung numerator. And 4,500 is the lowest point. Following that, the cost for the month, cost of goods sold for the month of June is 336,000. So, 336,000 sa taas. And 252,000 naman for the month of April okay, as the low cost. 252,000. So, our variable cost per unit could be computed by 84,000 over 1,500. If you do something repeatedly, it ceases to become conceptual. It becomes procedural na lang. Tulad nito, anong una? Kung first time mo man itong mamit, yung high-low method. Although I doubt it, of course. Eh, mukhang akala mo mahirap given the computational definition. Pero pag lagi-lagi na natin ginagawa, eh wala na yan. Tulad nga ng sabi ni Chef De Leon, it's easy, baby. Ayan. <laughs> okay. Total cost is equal to 336 yung high ang tinutukoy dyan, ito, less the total variable cost at that same level, it is 6,000 times 56. Ilan po tayo doon? Also 336,000. Now, what have we proven here? We have proven that the cost of goods sold is purely variable. Meaning to say, none of which is fixed. No portion is fixed. So, cost of goods sold is variable. Okay? So, still, we Requirement number one pa rin. Okay, number one ito, hindi letter A. I'm sorry. So, requirement number one. Next would be the shipping expense. We have examining. Okay, shipping expense. For shipping expense, same pa rin. Denominator volume, 6,000 and then 4,500. Yung ating cost, 71,000 at high and 56,000 at low. Then you have 15,000 numerator, 1,500 denominator. Ibig sabihin, 10 pesos variable cost per unit. Total cost, again, high 
high low method tayo at high is 71,000. Once again, kung gusto mo low, bahala ka. Okay lang yun. 6,000 times the 10 pesos variable cost per unit computed should be 60,000. Therefore, the fixed cost in relation to the shipping expense must be 11,000. Ano na patunayan natin? Yung shipping expense pala ay mixed cost. A portion of which is fixed, a portion of it is variable. Y is equal to 11,000 plus 10 pesos X. Ito yung equation natin for shipping expense. Yung kay cost of goods sold, it's purely variable siya eh. 56 pesos per unit. Next, ano susunod ba natin? Advertising expense. Dun sa ating advertising expense, kahit na anong gawin mo dyan, okay, talagang fix yan. So, kita naman natin, nakalagay na dyan, 70,000, 70,000, 70,000. Alright? So, kahit itest mo yan using the high-low method, Walang ibang lalabas dyan kundi talagang purely fixed cost yan. Next, salaries and commissions. Ilan tayo kaya dyan? Yung ating variable cost per unit. So, just the same. 6,000 less 4,500. Numerator, 180,500. Tulad ng nakasulat dyan. Less 143,000 should be equal to 37,500 over 1,500. Variable cost per unit must be 25 pesos. Again, total cost at high, 180,500. Total variable cost at high, of course, 6,000 activity units times 25 as computed. Total variable cost must be 150,000 total. Fixed cost must be 30,500. So, isa rin ito, mixed cost din siya. Okay? Y is equal to 30,500 plus 25X. Okay? Next, ano pa ba? Insurance expense, 9,000, 9,000, 9,000. Okay? Mas gamitan mo yan ng account analysis or high-low method, it's just the same. So, we are judging this based on the high-low method as we have said. But to dispense of much effort, we know, alam din natin kung ano lalabas dyan. So, talagang fixed cost yan. Depreciation expense, ganun din. Okay? 42, 42, 42,000. That would be a judge to be fixed expense. Fixed cost yan. So, ano pa natitira sa atin? Wala na. That would have satisfied our requirement number one. Number two, compute the company's total contribution margin for the month of May. So, for the month of May, our sales okay, was, ilan ba tayo? Month ng May. Could you please check? 735,000 given in the problem. Alright. Less the variable cost. Ilan ba yung variable cost natin? On a per unit basis, nakakompute na natin. 56 galing doon sa taas. Okay. And then you have 10 galing dito sa taas din 10 and then you have 25 galing dito sa taas okay that must be i don't know paki total mo na lang 56 1025 times the number of units for the month concerned 5250 total variable cost should be should be 477750 deducted from the total sales the total cm total contribution margin must be 250 7,250. Final answer, requirement number 2. IP number 9. The company manufactures a single product. The company keeps careful records of manufacturing activities from the following information, from which the following information has been extracted. So, level of activity, the low part is March. The high is June. Number of units produced, cost of goods manufactured, work in process inventory beginning, work in process inventory ending, direct materials per unit, direct labor costs per unit, manufacturing overhead costs in total, it is not given. The company's manufacturing overhead cost consists of both variable and fixed cost elements. To have data available for planning, management wants to determine how much of the overhead cost is variable with units produced and how much of it is fixed per month. So, ang requirement number one natin, for both March and June, estimate the amount of manufacturing overhead cost added to production. Okay? Manufacturing overhead cost added to production. The company had no 
under-applied or over-applied overhead in either month. So, for the first requirement, sulat na lang natin sa dito. Okay, pagkasahin natin. For the month of March, we have in the activity level is 6,000 production units. 6,000, sulat natin sa taas. For the month of June naman, we're in 9,000 production units ang ating activity. You have your direct materials. Ilan tayo for the month of uh, month of March? Ilan tayo? You have here 6 pesos times yung ating 6,000 units doon. That may be 36, that must be 36,000 pesos. Okay? Follow the same procedure for the month of June. So, kung ito ay 36,000, yung sa June naman must be 54,000. Direct labor. On a per unit basis, it is 10. So, 6,000 yon. This must be 60,000. Okay? 10 yon. 9,000 naman yung units. This must be 90,000. Overhead. Ito yung requirement sa atin. Hindi natin alam kung ilan. Okay? This one would then be your total manufacturing cost. Is it given in the problem? No, it is not. So, let us wait. Ilan yung ating work in process beginning? Okay? Work in process beginning is how much? Given siya. 9,000 for the month of March. Ito. For the month of June, it is 32,000. Okay? Adding the total manufacturing cost right there and the work in process beginning gives you your total work in process. Okay? Total work in process which must be, alam ba natin kung ilan? Hindi pa yata natin alam. So, let us wait. Is it given in the problem? No, it is not. Less, the work in process ending, given in the problem yan, 15,000, okay? And 21,000 naman dito. Deducting that from there would give you your cost of goods manufactured. Cost of goods manufactured, which is, I think, given in the problem, March must be 168,000, and this one should be 257,000. Okay. This is our solution format, and by working back, should be able to find out that your total work in process sa taas ng 15,000 must be 183. 278,000. Therefore, your total manufacturing cost should be 174,000 and 246,000. It so follows that this one must be 78,000 and this one must be 102,000. That would have satisfied the requirement number one. Number two, using the high-low method, estimate a cost formula for manufacturing overhead. High-low method, manufacturing overhead. So, 9,000 high, okay, 6,000 low, 102, kakukumpute pa lang natin, 1,000, less 78,000. Then, our variable cost per unit to satisfy partially requirement number two must be 8 pesos. Okay, so kung 8 pesos yan, again, total cost at high, kung high yang gusto mo ulit 102,000 less the total variable cost at that same level 9,000 times 8 could you please check is that 72,000? Yes. Okay. Must give you a fixed cost of 30. I believe it's 30. Yes. 1,000. So, dun sa requirement, estimate a cost formula. Our final response must be Y is equal to 30,000 plus okay, 8X. Y is equal to 30,000 plus 8X. Ito tayo mga kasama. Requirement number 3. If 7,000 units are produced during a month, what would be the cost of goods manufactured? So, sa number 3 tayo, ilan ang ating final answer? That must be, for direct materials, you have 6 pesos per unit. Direct labor, you have 10 pesos per unit. For overhead, variable, manufacturing overhead, that is 8 as per our computation. So, 6 plus 10 plus 8, that must be 24. Okay? 24 times the 7,000 units, ilan tayo doon? 168. 8,000. That must be your total variable cost. Plus, yung ating fixed cost computation at 
30,000. Okay? Therefore, our final answer for requirement number 3 must be 198,000. IP number 10. Below are costs and activity data for a particular cost over the last four periods. Your boss has asked you to analyze this cost so that management will have a better understanding of how this cost changes in response to changes in activity. Period 1, 2, 3, and 4. Activity 44 to 49. Cost 277 to 84. Requirement number 1. Using the least squares regression model, estimate the variable and the fixed elements. Okay. So, madali lang sana ito if you can use a scientific calculator because there is a calculator shortcut or a calculator technique that we can employ by using scientific calculator. But since it's no longer allowed in the board exam, we would have to do it manually. So, mas mahirap, talagang pasakit, ganun. So, activity is the X column and your Y is the cost column. We would have to use the two formula, the two equations, I should say, that we have encountered dun sa ating lecture notes. That is, summation of Y is equal to NA plus B, summation of X, summation of XY is equal to a summation of x plus b summation of x squared. So, yan tayo. Using these two equations, we should be able to arrive at proper values by the process of elimination. Or, yung manumanong elimination na alam mo nung ikaw ay nasa college and even sa high school pa lang. So, ibig sabihin dito ng summation of y, edi isasum up mo lang yung column ng y, which must be 1,110. 1, I have pre-computed this already. Okay? Yung N ay number of observations at yung A ay total fixed cost. Okay? Plus B summation of X. So, itong summation of X rito, isa sum up mo din lang yung column ng X. That must be 183. And then next one would be the Next equation, summation of xy means you have to multiply column x with column y and then add them. Okay, So say for example, 44 for period 1, 44 times 277, that would be 1,200, I'm sorry, that is 12,188. Okay? And this one would be 42 times 265, 11,130, 13,000. 632 and 13,916 okay the total of which must be 50,866 i hope you're following and then summation of x sabi dito a summation of x meron na tayo kanina ng summation of x exactly the same with this one okay next one would be summation of x squared how does that work? That means, yung ating x, i e square natin, and then you will sum it up. Say for example, 44 squared, ilan tayo doon? That would be 1,936. Okay, so this one is 1,936. Yung 42 squared naman, 1,764. Okay, and then 2,304 for period 3, and 49 squared is 2,400. All totaling 8,405, right? Now, following the equations, ang mangyayari, summation of y, eto daw, meron na tayo kanina, that is 1,110, alright? 1,110, okay? Plus, or rather equals, eto sinusundan natin, yung first equation. This is your equation 1 and 2, alright? Equation 1 yung una, equation 2 yung pangalawa. So, 4a, 4 observation points, a, yung n number of observations, plus 183b, the values we have already computed kanina. Okay, next equation number 2, summation of xy is 50,866 as computed here. 
okay, is equal to 183a, the summation of summation of our x plus 8405b. Ayan. So with this, we can now eliminate. Assuming gusto mong i-eliminate muna ay yung a. Alright? Then what do we have to do to eliminate a? Pag na-eliminate mo na yung a, ito 4a, 183a dito. Then ang matitira na lang yung b. Then we can substitute later on. So the step now is to find a number na pag minultiply mo sa 4, magiging 183 din para mag-cancel out sila parehas. And as it turns out, Siyempre, di-divide mo lang siya. The number would be what? The number would be 45.75, I think. Okay? So, ang gagawin mo ngayon para mag-eliminate, i-multiply mo lahat ng terms dito sa equation na to with 45.75. So that the first equation now becomes 50,782.5 kasi minultiply mo 110,000, 1110 rather dun sa 45.75. Okay? Is equal to, hindi lang dapat yung 4, lahat ng terms dun sa equation. 4 times 45.75, it becomes, syempre, 183. Okay? Dinivide mo kasi kanina yan. A plus 8,372. Alright? 8,372.25B. Ayan. So, okay na tayo dyan sa una. Then, yung second equation naman natin, you simply copy. So, 50,866 is equal to 183A plus 8,405B. And then you simply find the difference. So, difference nito, ayaan mo na yung negative or positive sign, basta difference lang. 83.5B. Okay, is equal to, this one would cancel out already, so ang matitira na lang yung B, is one would be 32.75B. Ayan. So, nothing left to do, but to divide this one by 32.75, ganun din sa other side, 32.75 in order to come up with the value of your B. Ilan tayo? It is exactly 2 and 72 over 131, I think. Or, kung gusto mong mag-round off, you can simply state that as 2.55, okay? So, ganun yung pag-derive natin ng value ng B. Now, much easier na kung paano natin gawin yung A kasi iso substitute mo lang yung amount, alright? Basta pakitandaan. This one is our answer. 272, 2, and 72 over 131 or simply 2.55, okay? Sa substitute mo yan. So, say for example, ang napili mong pag-substitutan, okay, pilitin natin isingit dito ito ay anong equation? Say for example, yung unahan. Ito. Okay? 1,110 1, is equal to 4A plus 183B. So, isosubstitute mo yung 2.55 or to be exact, 2 and 72 over 131, ayan, para makuha mo naman yung value nung A naman, okay? 1,110 is equal to 4A plus, you multiply, ilan tayo dyan? 466 and 76 over 131, mag-round off ka na lang dyan kung gusto mo, okay? So by this, madali na lang kasi eto, itatranspose mo siya doon, equal sign nito, then it becomes negative, so ang matitira na lamang sa atin, is yung 4a dito sa side na to ng equation. And then following the same procedure, madali na lang, i-divide mo na lang both sides with 4. Okay? So to cut the story short, para medyo mabilis tayo, 160.8549 okay, 618 up to the last decimal place is the value of your a or your total fixed cost. Okay? Alright. Next, number 2. <coughs> Calculate and interpret the r squared value for the regression number. So tulad ng nasabi natin dun sa ating discussion, your R squared is your coefficient okay, of determination. Ang gagawin lang, yung R, ini-square lang natin siya in order to reduce error. So using our calculator technique, we can derive the value of the R and simply square it. Alright? But using the manual method, oh, mas mahirap siya. Nonetheless, the final value for your R squared in this particular problem should be 0 0.88 33 Okay? So, the correlation is fairly high. Alright. Next, 
IP number 12. The accounting department of Archer Company, a merchandising company, has prepared the following analysis. You have here cost, cost of goods sold, which has the following cost formula according to the problem, 56 per unit, sales commissions 12% of sales, advertising expense 300,000 per month, administrative salaries 160,000 per month, billing expense is unknown, depreciation expense 62,000 per month. The accounting department feels that billing expense is a mixed cost containing both fixed and variable cost elements. A tabulation has been made of billing expense and sales in units over the last several months as follows. So from January to June, you have here your units sold in thousands, billing expense 30,000 to 35,000 January to June. The accounting department now plans to develop a cost formula for billing expense so that a contribution type income statement which is more useful full as compared to the to the traditional format can be prepared for management's use requirements using the least squares method estimate the cost formula for billing expense okay assume that the company plans to sell 30,000 units during July number two requirement to basahin na natin at a selling price of 1,000 per unit prepare a budgeted income statement for the month using the contribution margin format okay so following again either the long method that we have illustrated kanina or the calculator shortcut if you know the calculator shortcut already the following values should be arrived at okay ibig sabihin ito yung correct na amounts for your A or your total fixed cost. It must be 16,952.3095. Okay? Pinakita na natin yung procedure kanina kung paano gawin dun sa mas mixing problem. Alright? So, dito, same procedure pa rin. You identify your X. This is your X column. That is your Y column. And following the two equations, you should arrive at figures in order to substitute para dun sa ating equations. Yung values para dun sa ating equations. So, yung B or variable cost per unit would be 1,452.380952. Exacto ito class up to the last decimal. Okay? Now, di na natin ipapakita kung paano kinuha yan. Process of elimination, exactly the same kung paano natin siya ginawa dito. Okay? Now, here, in number 2, madali na lang kasi given naman na yung data. Sales, 30,000 units according According to number 2, times selling price of 100, that must be 3 million. Okay? Less all kinds of variable cost. Unahin mo yung cost of goods sold. Ilan yun? 30,000 units okay? times... 56 according to the problem that must be 1,680,000 so please check my arithmetic kung sakaling magkamali man tayo pasensya ka na simple lapses lang naman yun pero as we have said pagdating naman sa concept hindi hindi tayo magkakamali okay Next one would be the commission, I think. Okay? Sales, sales commission. So, ilan yung ating sales commission? That would be 12% times, kung ilan man yung ating sales, times 3 million doon. Alright? Ilan tayo doon? 360,000 is equal to, dapat ito, 360,000. Ayan. Next, ano pa ba? Susunod. Advertising is fixed, eh? Purely fixed. Administrative salaries. Billing expense natin. Ilan yung ating billing expense? Since na-derive na natin yung values for billing, ibig sabihin, madali na lang. 1,452 per unit. Tulad ng sabi natin dyan, no? Oh. Ito, 1,452. 0.380952. Kung medyo mitikuloso ka, <coughs> times 30. Bakit times 30 lang? Kasi, nakasulat dito, 30,000 units. Yung ginamit nating data dito, tinanggalan natin ng tatlong zero. Are you following? So, instead na 30,000 isusulat mo dyan, dapat 30 din lang dito. Okay? Ilan yung ating total? Therefore, dito, multiply. It must be 43,571 point or something. 4, 2, sabi dyan, 8, 5, 6. Could you please check? This one would be our total variable cost. It must be 2,083,000.083,000 571.429. Ayan. Kung may pagkakaiba man tayo for as long as decimals lang, eh hayaan mo na. Huwag na natin pag-awayan yun. Tama ba? Okay. Total contribution margin, could you please deduct? It must be 916,428.5714. Okay. 
Ayan. Less the fixed cost. Ano-ano ba yung ating mga fixed cost? Yung advertising. Okay. Advertising, 300,000. Ano pa? Administrative, admin. Okay. Ad lang yun. Ito, admin, expense of 160,000. Ano pa? Yung ating depreciation. Ilan naman yun? 62,000. Ano pa? Billing. Yung fixed portion natin kanina. Yung A. Ito. Okay. 16,952. 16,952. Okay. Ayan mo na lang yung decimal. Okay. Kasi hindi din kakasya. So, somewhere around, ilan ang to total natin dito? I don't know. Could you please check? Somewhere around 538,952.381. As I have told you, kung meron tayong difference sa decimal, hayaan mo na. It's a matter of rounding off. Pinusulat lang natin yung exact because we are a little bit more comfortable seeing the exact figures. But in the board exam, allowed naman mag-round off. Ang safest, sabi nila, two decimal places pagka-ordinary figure. Pero kung present value factor, at least four. Okay? At least that is to my discretion as per experience. Okay? 0.1905. This one would be our final answer for number two requirement. Okay? IP number 13. The statistician of the company has developed the following cost prediction equation using observations from 12,000 to 30,000 hours. Ang sabi niya, Y is equal to 236,837 plus 3.7625. Okay? Requirements. Find the predicted maintenance cost at 25,000 machine hours. Anong response natin dyan? E di very simple. For number one, di kolektahin mo lahat ng variable cost. That is, 3.7625 times 25,000 machine hours. Is that machine hours? Yes, machine hours is equal to 94,000 ilan? 94,000 062.50 Kolektahin mo lahat ng fixed cost Alright? That is 236,000 kama 837 according to the problem. The total of which must be total cost. Ilan? 330,000 0. Could you please check that? 330,000 Okay? Please check. I think that is correct. Okay? That is the final answer for number one. Number two. Will maintenance cost be z at zero machine hours be 236,000? Yes or no? At zero machine hours if this is your cost equation, y is equal to a plus bx. Paano daw kung zero activity level? Ibig sabihin, itong x or the activity is at zero. Ang tanong, ang total cost ba would be 236,837? The answer is, you might be tempted to answer yes, but the correct answer is no. Okay? Check this out. Alalahanin mo yung definition natin ng relevant range. Okay? Ano ibig sabihin? Anong, anong sabi natin? Okay, wa wag mong titignan yung equation as is. You take the equation as to what its essence is. Ano ba yung essence na nire-represent nito? Ang sabi kasi natin, yung relevant range, okay, is the range within which valid yung definition ng variable cost at saka fixed cost. Variable being constant in constant per unit and variable per to in total. And the fixed cost is constant in total but varying per unit. At zero machine hours, hindi ibig sabihin nun na lahat ng fixed cost will still be the same. Pag kasi hindi ka nag-operate, hindi ka nag-operate, some of the fixed costs would be avoided. To cut the story short, zero machine hours is outside the relevant range. So, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin that the total fixed cost would still be the same. Okay? So, the answer here is no because of that explanation. Okay? Next, multiple choices. Okay? 